Hey everybody, so as you can see we're back in our uh, original setting here. So because it turns out that there was a class that had to uh, go on as I was rubbing out the board. So uh, unfortunately I couldn't film there so I had to come back to my original place to film. So anyway, uh, but that doesn't stop the fact that we're going to go through this question anyway. So just a quick reminder, as I said in the previous video, this one's going to need a calculator. So uh, just get a calculator ready when you, when you want to do this question. So pause the video, take a picture of this question and... Yeah, just try and do it. If there's anything you don't understand or you finished it, then just uh, continue the video just to see me walk through it. All right? So, here we go. 0 0.1595 grams of menthol undergoes complete combustion. Okay, one more thing about menthol. Um, see, IB likes to take these chemicals that you are likely unfamiliar with and sort of ask, and sort of ask questions about it. So... Um, but even if they're unfamiliar to you, it doesn't really matter in a sense because they're really seeing how you are able to apply your own chemistry knowledge to understand an unknown compound like, that is unknown to you, okay? So, uh, in the case, we don't actually need to know the, uh, the molecular form of menthol. We don't need to know what it's actually used for, but then, um, but then like the kinds of but the kinds of data analysis question might reveal its um, its actual compositions, and then from there you can kind of deduce its um, its kind of uses. But uh, okay, I think I'm going a bit too off topic. Back to the question. So, it undergoes complete combustion to form zero point one eight four zero grams of water. Okay, notice. Uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, the water formed here is a gas, not a liquid. Okay, so actually, I think I should specify that gas. Okay. And 0 0.4490 grams of carbon dioxide. Yeah, uh, don't forget the states. Okay, so find out menthol's empirical formula. So uh, I actually forgot to write this down actually. So menthol, okay, let, wait, menthol is comprised of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay, so uh, in, this, in this sense, that CXHY. Uh, o, uh, let's call alpha because Z looks like a 2. So plus O2, thus we would have XCO2 plus Y over 2 H2O. Okay, so uh, these const so these X, Y, and alpha, these are basically just constants. They don't really mean much uh, when you're actually making the calculation, but it's just to draw the, just to write out the equations just to be sure what we're doing. Okay, so. So firstly, um, in order to calculate the empirical formula by uh, given these kinds of data, what we can do is we can work our way backwards. We can determine the number of moles of products and then to find the empirical formula of the reactant. So so I, let me just give you an example. Let's start with water, okay? So first of all, we know that the molar mass of water, MH2O, is 18.02 grams per mole. Check the periodic table. And we also know the mass here of water that is evaporated which is 0 0.1840 grams okay so if we just use the relationship from beginning uh the mass of a substance over its molar mass will be equal to the number of moles it has so 0 0.1840 grams over 18.02 grams per mole okay so this would be equal to 0 0.0102 moles okay so this is for so this is for water right here okay now let's do the same for carbon dioxide. So the molar mass of carbon dioxide, uh, let, me, let me just write that clearly, uh, CO2, right? This is equal to 44.01 grams per mole. Once again, uh, you could just check the periodic table for that uh, molar mass value, okay? And then we also know the mass that is um, produced, which is 0 .0, 0 0.4490 grams. So once again, using that relationship, we would go 0 0.4490 grams over 44.01 grams per mole. And the number of moles we would have here is also 0 0.0102 moles. Oh, and just uh, just one more thing, actually. Uh, notice these two values are actually um, different values, okay? Because you actually have to go out to the fifth decimal point to actually see they're different. But um, see, this is why it's always great to use, like, use the answer function on your calculators when doing these questions because if you ever end up with an answer with these answers that gets that becomes similar then uh you kind of run into a problem there okay so just uh just make sure you use the actual answers on your calculators but just write it into three sig figures when you actually write down your answer that's fine okay anyway so 
Now we need to consider a few things. So let's, okay, so let's start with carbon dioxide because this is easier to grasp, okay? So if we have 0 0.0102 moles of carbon dioxide, then that means we would have um, 0 0.0102 moles of carbon, okay? Because in each molecule of carbon dioxide, there's only one carbon atom. And thus, if there's only one carbon atom per molecule of carbon dioxide, and thus we have this many moles of carbon dioxide, then that means there is also this many moles of carbon, okay? So in a way we can say that the number of moles of carbon is equal to 0 0.0102 moles, okay? So, so, we've, so we've done that for carbon already because carbon's a part of the, uh, oh, is a part of menthol, okay? So let's do the same for hydrogen. In water molecule, there are two molecules, there are two atoms of hydrogen. Since we have 0 0.0102 moles of water molecules, so we take 0 0.0102 moles and multiply by, by two, two hydrogen atoms. And thus, the number of moles of hydrogen we would have is double this value. That thus will be equal to 0 0.0204 moles. Okay, so, and with that, we determine the number of moles of hydrogen, we also determine the number of moles of carbon, and thus we can begin to construct our ratio, okay? So our ratio here would be, actually I'm just going to write this a little further down, 0 0.0204, that's hydrogen to carbon to another value, okay? So this, this value of moles is going to be the one for oxygen. So... Now, yes, you might be wondering, why didn't we actually use oxygen earlier on just to calculate this, okay? Because the reason here is, because in complete combustion, you're actually burning a, an organic compound in oxygen, in excess oxygen conditions. So it doesn't really make much sense to actually calculate the oxygen from these compounds just on its own, because there's excess being put into these compounds. So what we can do is, we can actually use this value up here, because we have, actually haven't used it, because there's 0 0.1595 grams of menthol. Okay, so how we can use this? So, if you think about it, in 0 0.1595 grams of menthol, a proportion of that mass is going to belong to carbon, and a proportion of that mass is going to belong to hydrogen, and the remaining proportion is going to belong to oxygen. But since we know that there is this many moles of carbon in this molecule, in menthol, and there's this many moles of hydrogen in, in menthol as well, then if we're able to use the relationship between molar mass and the number of moles, then we'll be able to calculate the mass the mass that uh, carbon takes up in menthol and the mass that hydrogen takes up in menthol, okay? And thus, with that, and we subtract those masses by, no, and we subtract 0 0.1595 by those masses, and thus we would get the mass of oxygen in the compound, okay? So let's just uh, do a quick calculation. So the mass of hydrogen here is this number of moles multiplied by its relative atomic mass, okay? Or its molar mass. So as you can see here, the answer would be approximately 0. 0206 grams, okay? And for carbon, so it's this number of moles multiplied by 12.01, the molar mass of carbon, okay? And thus we would have 0 0.123 grams, okay? So, and then the mass of oxygen would be equal to 0 0.1595 grams, the, the, ma the mass of menthol, minus the sum of 0 0.0206 grams plus 0 0.123 grams, okay? And thus, the mass of oxygen here would be equal to, so let me just see what I got, okay, 0 0.0163 grams, okay? So this is the mass of oxygen. And then, so we're just using a relationship as we've done here. So the mass of oxygen, 0 0.0163 grams over its molar mass, 16.00 grams per mole, Okay, and this would be equal to, let's see how many moles, okay, 0 0.00102 moles, correct to three significant figures, okay? So thus filling in the final value of our ratio here, so it's hydrogen to carbon to oxygen, so it's 0 0.0204, 0 0.0102, to 0 0.0102. So in this case, obviously 0 0.0102 is the smallest value of the ratio, so we would divide all sides of this by this value, okay? So if we just divide it, we would have 20 to 10 to 1, okay? So obviously this is the fully simplified version now because while 20 to 10 may be uh, not exactly simplified, it can be simplified to 1 to 2, but the 1 is fully simplified. Thus, this is the overall empirical formula of the ratio of hydrogen to carbon to oxygen in 
the formula of menthol. And thus, the empirical formula of menthol would be C10H20O. Okay, so this is basically how you would approach, how you would calculate the empirical formula. Okay, so now that we've calculated the empirical formula here, I actually should highlight this. Okay, so um, usually um, the question would follow up by giving you data of the actual relative formula mass of the comp of the compound, okay, which in this case is menthol. Or sometimes they might ask you to calculate it in a different part, okay. So uh, the question where I took this from, they actually pr they actually asked you to calculate the uh, relative formula mass of menthol, okay. But uh, we don't have the time for that because we're gonna because actually we can actually cover that in the next lecture. But uh, just for a heads up, the relative formula mass, okay, for menthol. Of menthol, wait, uh, menthol is 156.22 grams per mole. Okay, so that's the real. Actually, no, wait, forget that. Forget the grams per mole. The relative formula mass of menthol is 156.22, and therefore its molar mass would be 156.22 grams per mole. Okay, remember the units. Now, given the relative formula mass and also given the empirical formula, we can thus calculate the overall molecular formula of menthol. Why can we do that? It's because, think of it this way, the empirical formula itself also has a also has a relative formula mass. So if you just calculate the relative formula mass, okay, RFM, of the empirical formula, C10H20O, okay, so we would have 10 times 12.01, okay, plus, let's see, uh, 20 times 1.01, and then plus 16.00. So if we just uh, add these up, okay, so as you can see, uh, that's 12.01 uh, times 10, and then plus 20.2, and then plus 16. So this is approximately equal to 156.3, okay? So as you can see, the numbers here are actually quite similar. So in the sense that the calculated relative atomic mass of menthol is is actually the empirical formula itself. And thus, the overall mo molecular formula, okay, wait, uh, molecular formula, of menthol, is C10H20O, okay? So, um, so yeah, that's basically how you calculate it, okay? So, uh, but unfortunately, not all questions are going to be uh, like, sort of like this, where the relative formula mass of a compound is exactly equal to the one of its empirical formula. Usually, it'd be like a, like a factor of it. For example, the, for example, the relative formula mass of a compound might be double the relative formula mass of that of that molecule's empirical formula. Okay, so in this case, you would multiply all these ratios by two in order to get the coefficients of the coefficients of the numbers of atoms within each compound. So with the completion of that, we're done, basically. We're done with applying mole calculations to more complex areas of quantitative chemistry. Now, there is one more little thing that we have to go through before we move on to the next unit, but with this complete, that's basically the bulk of the work done. So in the next video, we're going to be using, we're going to be learning a little bit more about the gas law, specifically the equation PV equals NRT. So uh, if you take physics, you would probably know what that is, but I would still encourage you to watch it because just to give you a recap, okay? So as for those who don't take physics, I strongly recommend you to watch the next video on, on the gas laws because if you don't, then you're likely to not do good in the exam because the gas laws are also quite popular in the, um, in the IV syllabus of chemistry. Okay, I'll see you guys next time.